Oh, all right. Good morning. Um, I'm waiting uh, to add those students entering the classroom. So while we are waiting, our uh, some basic questions I would like to recap with all of you. Uh, turn, uh, turn to activity 13.4 of your book, 13.4. So you may find the page, I will show you that one. I will show this one. And to start with, uh, spend some time on doing this. And uh, most importantly is to give me the reason. Okay. It is something about uh, the uh, distinguishing whether or not the process is chemical one, is a chemical change or physical change. Okay. While we are waiting, uh, I would like to double check attendance, first of all. 34, uh, three more to come. Let me see. Okay, activity 13.4, can you see that page? I show it on, on the screen. Okay. Number two, three, are you here? Number two and three. Let me see. Number two and three. That should be. Kahim Chanza Meng, are you here? Two more. Just wait for two more. Uh, Kahim, not here. And number five, Chan Jun Hin. Number five, Chan Jun Hin. No. Five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, fourteen, fourteen, just back. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty seven. Twenty seven, not here, is it? Twenty seven. Mgawa. Mgawa, not here. I'm here. Really? Where are you? Where are you? Can you find your name? 27. I see. Oh, found your name. Okay, I'll repeat 21 here. Uh, number two. Number two here. Yep. So number five. That should be Chen Junhin. Yes, here. Oh, Clement Chan, could you please uh, change the naming system? It's 3B05. Thank you. Now, thank you. So that means all of you are present. Now, uh, good morning, all of you. Now, take a look on this um, uh, exercise uh, to have a big care about. Last, last time, uh, we just have a rush of this definition. Uh. So it's time to take a look on that. Uh, Melting and reshaping metals. What do you think? Is it a melt, a physical change or chemical change? And give me a reason. Chemical change. Chemical change, why? Yeah. Now, take a look on what's that. Uh, he, he, try, uh, he just melt uh, the metal to red hot and then pour it into the mold. Okay, pour it into the mold and change its shape. Physical. Physical change. Why? Uh, because the 
Okay, receiving mental is uh, from equal to solid. Yep, a melting means from the changing of physical state from solid to liquid only. And then we shaping means from liquid turn back to solid. Okay, from liquid turn back to solid. So the whole process doesn't involve any uh doesn't involve any uh new substance, right? Doesn't involve any new substance, so it's a physical change. Okay, thank you. And uh number two. Chemical change. Chemical change, why? Why is it a chemical change? Why? I don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You 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 check the word burning. Burning. What happens to the burning of a paper? What happens to the paper? Paper will turn to what? They will turn to what? No, no idea. It will turn into a black or oh, black black substance, black solid. What is that? Do you know what is that black solid? Um, I don't know. You don't know. So what else? Now, this is what you will see, it is carbon. What else? We have got some carbon dioxide. It is burning, right? And what? In form two, we should know, right? It is water. So paper, indeed, uh, it is made up of cellulose. Cellulose, tin white salt. So once I burn it into form carbon, carbon dioxide, and water, all these, all these three, when you compare it with the reactant, it is just a new substance, so uh, they cannot go back. So it is uh, just chemical change. Okay, so it is some work uh, that you need, you should pay attention to. And Macong uh, Sun, take a look on question C, and I would like to invite uh, the other three students to uh, talk about question four. Uh, Question four should be uh, Lam Hua Hin. Question five, uh, Pun Zhou Hei. Question six, Wu Shafai. So uh, get prepared. Question three. Uh, physical change. Yep, why? Because uh, he's just breaking, breaking the chocolate into small pieces. Mm -hmm. No chemical new substance uh, form it. Yeah, so correct. No new substances form. So remember, the way to define is very simple whether or not there are new substances formed or not. Okay, so similar to question one, okay, you just um, uh, break into pieces, you melt it, and they remove it. Very similar to this, right? It is just a physical change. Uh, Okay, it change in a uh, uh, size of the particles, but not the chemical component inside. So how about the number four? Solving sugar in water. Uh, very, number four. I think it, it is physical. Number, it's physical chemical. change, right? Uh, put a star in here is very uh, com complicated. Okay, in that the solving sugar in water, it is what they call it a, a form a mixture. So how you know that is a mixture? Once I set uh, can be separated so easily. The answer is yes. If you want to evaporate the water away, so what is left behind? So sugar, they were just left behind. So what is mean by evaporate? Okay, it's just a process involving a physical method. So 
uh, this is a very tricky one. Sugar in water, may salt in water, all those they are just a mixture, but not a compound. So if you want to separate it, uh, it is uh, you you simply need heating, and it can help. So it's a physical change, a mixture. Number five, thank you. Number five. Uh, it's a chemical change because rust was, change. From, um, rust yeah. was formed from oxidation. Yeah, it's an oxidized product of uh, a is an oxidized iron. Okay, also you want to talk about it as an iron oxide. It's a type of iron oxide. A new substance is formed, so it's a chemical change. Thank you. Number six, grueling yes. steaks. What do you think? Number six, clearing sticks. So one feature is you talk about it as uh, grilling sticks, right? You, uh, is that uh, uh, to make a difference between chemical change and physical change? Is that there the change is irreversible or not? Is it reversible or irreversible? Irreversible, but how yet? Which means cannot go back. Okay, so chemical change. Chemical is, change. Yep, chemical change. Yes, what happened to the meat from raw to cooked, right? So you cannot go back, uh, put it back into refrigerator and turn back to raw meat. Now it is different from chocolate, right? While you melt, uh, while you break the chocolate into pieces, I melt it and remove it, okay? And uh, the whole process is just physical change because I change in the state from liquid uh, from solid to liquid, a liquid back to solid. But for green sticks, it's something different. It is because of the fact that you are going to heat protein, dam While protein, uh, it is uh, heat sensitive things, just like egg yolk, right? Egg yolk, egg white. While you heat it uh, for uh, quite a high temperature, what will happen? It will solidify, it will form solid. While the process cannot go back, Okay, so uh, this is what you know about a protein, dam So we, we will call that type of process, a type of denaturation being said. So it is somewhat a very complicated term uh, in biology, but don't worry, uh, you, uh, you, may, you, may, you may know some of them about proteins in biology uh, for, in form three. Okay, questions? So in short, What's the difference between physical change and chemical change is that first of all, the change is reversible or not. Can you see that? Second, most importantly is what, whether or not there are any new substances are formed. If there are new substances are formed, chemical change, no new substances are formed, there are physical change. Is that clear? Okay. So this is what uh, you may know about this part. Do uh, you think that you understand what is happening? Could you please put a thumbs up in your chat box? Let me know. Uh, you know what's happening. Uh, please put a thumbs up. Not hands up, thumbs up. You understand? You understand what is happening? Uh, if you don't know, uh, you, you, you can put up a hand. Let me know. Better? Mm -hmm. It seems better. Uh, most of you have got it. Uh, quite a number of you don't understand don't worry uh you may come to me right by by whatsapp me or else just um, most of you okay good so today what you are going to do today is to uh take a look on the new chapter uh is on the uses of metals just wait for me i'd like to open that another powerpoint Now, this is another PowerPoint. Now, uh, we come to uh, another topic is on the uses of metal. Let's try to take a look in detail, right, on metals, okay? Metals, they are quite widely used, right? On the street, there are so many metal products uh, there. Uh, 
So uh, it's no need to mention. Uh, We've got two cartoon girls. One they uh, they want to mention the necklace. Can in it is made up of silver. Okay, while the water bottle they are made of aluminium. Okay, it's not just that too. On the streets, we may have so many different metal items. Now, um, for example, this one is metal, right? But it's painted, right? Painted, uh, uh, painted metal. This one is also metal. What else? Oh uh, yeah, this one, metal. Metal, metal, uh, metal rail, uh, what else? The bus stop. That one, metal. What else? Oh uh, yeah, this one. The support, the support effort testing sign is also metal. Oh, uh, this one of, of course metal. So many. Ah, yeah. Here, window frame, they are also metal. Can you see that? So uh, all those they are of metals, but uh, what metals are we using? What metals are we using? Mainly. What are the commonly used metals? Iron. Iron, yeah. Teeth. What else? Copper. Copper, yeah. Tom. What else? Aluminium. Yep, aluminium. Loy. So we have to name a few. That three in particular. Aluminium and iron, they are quite commonly used. For iron, uh, for copper, yes, of course. For example, we have got door knobs and you, it is uh, made up of uh, uh, copper alloy, okay? We call that brass, so you know it later. So you may find so many different types of metals there. So our, so uh, you know that, uh, what metals they are used to make them and there should be some reason behind. Now, before that, that means we humans love to uh, uh, get some metals from the use. But however, you will see uh, that uh, uh, it's quite uh, difficult to find the metal. We need some extraction method. Tailina. You need some extraction method in order to get the metals. Where will you find the metals, actually? They're found inside, uh, they're found underground as rocks, right? But some different rocks they will have containing different metals, but uh, they are but at, at, but he, but in the past people in the past they don't know anything about that material we call it metal. In prehistoric times, a feature that is the, uh, that distinguish humans uh, from a other animals that is that the humans could make and use tools. So use tools, so many animals can use too. For example, monkey. Okay, they, they, for example, they, they can use some stones to heat the fruits, they, you know, to get them to eat. For example, they, they try to crush the coconut. Have you ever checked some uh, National Geographic right, video, right? So, so monkeys love to hit, hit against uh, those two hot substances in order to get uh, the, the fruits inside. But, uh, but this is what a very important time it is to make the juice, make the juice. So it make a distinction between the human and the animals. For it is for human who uh, who can make also. Okay. So according to the main types of the material used to make use, the uh, the historian they uh, from the AT they're coming out or they can date back and they will find that the human of civilization co uh, come over those several age, Stone Age, Copper Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. So what is mean by those ages, right? Uh, more than 6,000 years ago, the human start to use wood, bones, and stones. Stones and to make tools and weapons. What are they in common? Is that they are easily seen, okay? By human and they can easily obtain from the ground, right? Easy obtain. So it is just above the ground and I see it, I found it is hot, I will use it. Okay, but later on, if you want to talk about copper age, uh, or in the southern, uh, uh, people do uh, they have invented some method to extract metals. So uh, the very first few metals that can be extracted, we call that copper. It is from ore, coma. 
So at that time, the people uh, extract the metal by accident. What does it mean by accident? You know it. It's not by intention. Uh, they just are uh, at, at one uh, for some days they got some stones. You know that at the time people start to use uh, know how to use fire, right? So they gather some stones to make a stove. Okay, 一个一个炉啊。So we try to put put some uh, uh wooden pieces or something that can be burned uh to to cook to for cooking. Well, you you know that the fuel will we we run out one day. Okay, after running out the fuel, they discover. That near the stones there are some shiny substances. While the shiny substances nowadays, you know that it is metal, and at that time, the uh, that type of accident is already a type of extraction method nowadays. From our viewpoint, what is that? We call that the heating. All of you, please mark it down. The heating ore with carbon. Where is carbon? Carbon is from wood, from burning wood. So you know that just like burning paper, okay, there may be some ashes left behind which cannot be burned so easily. So I heat the ore with the carbon. It is a way to produce the copper ore. Now the equation should be the copper oxide plus carbon undergo heating. That may be formed it as copper plus carbon dioxide. A very strange equation, right? But once you will see that we have got three elements there: copper, oxygen, and carbon. It seems like the carbon will have ability to fight against copper to get that oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Can you get my point? While leaving behind is just copper. Well, uh, afterwards they found that the copper they can be made to use tools. Coins at that time, you know, the civilization start to have a trading of materials and start to use the have a concept of money. Okay, so ornaments and containers. Okay, all those they used it because it is quite hard and strong. But sometimes they found that it is quite durable. We call that corrosion resistant. Contumsek, contumsek. Could you please mark it down? Contumsek. So corrosion resistant. Okay, so it's such that what is the hidden message? It is said to be durable, durable, 耐用啊。Okay, they can be used for some time, but all in a sudden, and uh, uh, while that that types of technique advances, that type of techniques advances, and here comes to another age, we call that Bronze Age. Now take a look on the antique, but right, with the color of it. Okay, we、we'll、see that color for、uh, copper age antiques. How about、uh, how about bronze age? Take a look on the next slide. So you may see the bronze in Chinese. We call it Qing Tong. Why is it called Qing Tong? It's because of the green patches found on here. Wow, that what is that green patches?、Uh, it is in form of a copper compound. While copper compound is found as、uh, as green, so、uh, the the very famous、uh, green patches statue that you know in the world in Statue of Liberty, Jiao Sanjia, right? So you know the whole thing is green, but but at the same time in Hong Kong we 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 can highly likely get one green statue as well. Do you know what's that? In the Lantau Island, we've got a big Buddha. Okay, the big Buddha it starts to turns to green. While at the first year of making up the statue is still reddish brown, but nowadays once you go to the Lantau Island and look at the big Buddha, it it turns green and will be greener and greener. Okay, but which means that that statue it becomes older and older. Can you get my point? So it is made up of bronze. Bronze, what is that? It is an alloy of copper and tin. Bronze, all of you mark it down. Tin tong, it is an alloy of gum. A L L O Y, hub gum, made up of copper and tin. So they found that after mixing those two metals, two substances is found to be harder than pure copper. Than pure copper. So the people they use bronze later on are changed from copper to bronze to make the container, mirrors, musical instruments, sculpture, weapons, 
etc. Can you get my point? So, and afterwards, when the technology advances, uh, uh, people can start uh, to heat it for a higher temperature. Okay, if from the advancement of extraction, the human they can learn how to extract uh, extract iron from ores. Okay, so it will be raises up to seven to eight hundred degrees. Okay, they will have such a technique, and we call that a blast furnace, Gu Feng Lou. So it is a place where uh, the temperature is so high inside, and the iron has become the most important metal starting from this. And you find that uh, again, um, it seems it's harder. The material is 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 better in terms of hardness when you compare with bronze. Okay, so you may but you may find that the uh, the pieces of iron is somewhat brittle when it is in is and as an antique. Okay, so what do you know about this and how does it relate to the metal? So you may find that the Stone Age was a time where the early humans they used to do some weapons just by seeing. And afterwards, the coming up of copper, bronze, and irons, they are three commonly used metals uh, by human in the past. But it is somewhat related to what? Extraction, okay, Thailand. So you may find that uh, the last sentence I would like to share with you on here is that it is much related to the extraction method is the technology of the human, and also whether or not we can find the ore that we call the availability. Okay, in order to determine, uh, we will use the metal and the age uh, of uh, what I mean is the time of discovery of the metals. Simply speaking, the metals, they are easily extracted. They were discovered earlier than those are more difficult to extract. Before we end up the lecture today, now, I uh, would like you guys to take a look on the book. Uh, we have got the second page. We have got some of the medals. And I would like you guys to check the year of discovery. Okay, the year of discovery of metal. Okay. So uh, simply speaking, you may find such a phenomenon of gold was once the first uh, few discovered metal. By used by human and is easy to extract from more, not only by looking. However, not abundant, so not widely used. Copper and iron, they are abundant, but they are more difficult to extract. So you know that discovered and use it later. So take a look on uh, the second page. Where is it? Is it page 35? Is it? As I remember, we have got uh, the, the column on the uh, right hand side. You are going to find or the year of discovery of different metals. Check for me. For example, I would like to get to know the year of discovery of gold, silver, copper, mercury. Uh, what else? Um, tin, iron, uh, aluminium, sodium, potassium. Okay, could you please find that nine metals, nine metals, and try to find the year of discovery of metals as well as the extraction method. Can you get my point? Please relate the two for me. Okay, and you'll find that nine elements. Now for those who cannot copy them down well, don't worry, I would, I would like to, have it uh, onto the WhatsApp as well. Any questions so far? No? If not, I would like to say goodbye to all of you. I start to have a second lesson. Bye-bye.